As the Boston College Eagles continue to soar in the ACC and the national rankings, the big picture looks great. I'm looking for the chemistry. I'm looking for the attitude. I'm looking for the mentality. I'm looking for who takes coaching. I'm looking for the hustle. I'm looking for the little things that you see when people don't think you're watching. And then I look specifically at schemes on both sides of the ball. What I think is good, what I don't think is good, how things are being taught, how they're being coached, the efficiency of how we run the practice. You know, what can be done better? What can be done more efficiently? Um, do we need more breaks, less breaks? Should it be more longer periods, less periods? Do we want to tackle or not tackle? Should we be in full pads? Should we be in shorts? I mean, it goes on and on. It's the management of the program, uh, both support staff, coaches, and players. You have got to have your finger on the pulse. You've got to have your eyes on everything. That's my job. My job is to manage this whole thing in every way. Some people just think like, oh, you know, this coach is a great X and O guy, or this guy has some secret sauce. That's not what it is. It's about building a program. It's about running and driving a program, motivating a program, and all those factors go into it. They embrace the traditions and honor of those who played before them, knowing that any height can be reached. Throws it down. Booty, 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 booty. Cut by Cut. Boston College. Cut. I don't believe it. Cut. Cut the Eagles. Win it. Win it. Win it. Win it. Upholding the values of compassion, integrity, and service for their families, their teammates, and their school. They leave here prepared for any field. This is what makes college football so fun. They put on the maroon and gold, knowing that not everyone can play here, as at their core, they are true student athletes. This is heart. This is pride. This is worth cheering for. This is Boston's college. Welcome to Boston College Football. Decide to fly. The beat was crisp even if the weather was soggy and Boston College got set for a visit from Louisville. The Eagles putting an unbeaten alumni stadium home record on the line on a rainy afternoon in Massachusetts. Third down in trouble and a sack. Wyatt Bray tracks down Puma Pass back inside the 10. Look at this, wide open down the backside, the tight end. It's going to be a touchdown for Hunter Long. How about that? Missing running back A.J. Dillon for the second straight game. The Eagles scored first through the air. Ball hit the ground, and it's fumbled again, and then the hit is made. Strahan, the linebacker, polished off Hall. It was apparent early that B.C. was controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Anthony Brown is rolling early. Uh-oh. Little flea flicker, Michael Walker, the catch inside. A strong Eagle start as Walker's grab set up the ground game with Ben Glein starting in place of Dillon. East West run towards the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown, Boston College. Two yard scamper by Ben Glein's. He's the Eagle in the end zone. Is that bow worthy? Bow, my friend, bow. With the old school uniforms, there was some old school hitting. Red zone interceptions by Finn. Whoa! Sometimes you can see how well Boston College plays defense. Sometimes you can hear it. The Maroon and Gold spent a lot of time in the Cardinals' backfield. Pass, look at the throw, intercepted in Chambers. Sixth career interception, fourth of the year for Chambers. The Eagles have had one of the best ball hawking defenses in the country for several years, but a few turnovers of their own allowed Louisville to work a short field for two scores and then take the lead in the second quarter. But the BC defense hung in there, shutting out the Cardinals the rest of the way. And for the second straight week, special teams created a touchdown. 
a score that put the Eagles ahead for good. BC could get good field position. They get a block instead. Levy going to score again for the second week in a row. Travis Levy recovers a block punt in the end zone after Nolan Borgerson blocked it. Levy's contributions weren't limited to special teams as things continued to brighten. Here's Brown out of the backfield, Levy inside the 10 at the 5. And down to around the 2 goes Travis Levy. Bailey, touchdown. True freshman David Bailey, along with Ben Glines, each had touchdowns and over 100 yards rushing, while the defense piled up seven sacks, second most in school history. Third and long, Glines the carry, fires through. Ben Glines breaks free. 40, 35, 30, shoved out of bounds at the 25. Sweep for Smith, around the edge, diving for the pylon, touchdown. Hand it to a blur. In the end, the win over Louisville was about perseverance. The Eagles had to overcome some sloppy weather and turnovers, but banded together until they got it right. The defense holding Louisville to just 71 second half yards. They remain unbeaten at home, and after a grueling seven week run of games, they head to their bye week on a strong note with a chance to refresh. Happy, but not satisfied. With success behind them and work ahead of them. Wells talked to me a lot about team. Nyack is a very diverse community. We have all kinds of races and religions and cultural backgrounds and economic, socioeconomic levels in Nyack. And he talked to me about this a lot. He said, you know, Mom, I love being on a team. You know why I love being on a team? Because when we're on a team, all our differences go away. And we become one big family working toward a common goal. Mm -hmm. And that's what drove him. And, and so, and he carried that with him to BC, where it was certainly supported. That. So you're one great family here, and we're proud to be part of it. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Who was Wells Crowther? Someone who will never be forgotten. The Eagles family will make sure of that. For he can be seen in each of its members. In their passion, in their pride, you can't help but to feel his presence. And especially during the annual Red Bandana Game Day, you can almost see him. Because to know the people of Boston College is to know Wells Crowther. He was fun-loving and passionate. Team, family, and school were what mattered most to him. The ideals of BC, education with a heart and soul, with the power to transform and be used in service to others. As long as those ideals are kept, Wells will live on forever with every new generation of the Eagles family. Fueled in part by the emotion of this special game, Boston College roared out of the gates against Miami. They said they'd go into the bag of tricks. Smith, the former quarterback, back to Anthony Brown, showing his running abilities down inside the 15. The opening drive on a crisp autumn Friday night at Alumni Stadium set the tone for the evening. Former quarterback Jeff Smith threw and caught passes on big plays, giving the Eagles the early lead with a nine-yard touchdown reception. Brown. Touchdown, Jeff Smith. And Boston College, an impressive opening drive.
The second time the Eagles got the ball, it was equally impressive, mixing a physical running game with a precision pass attack. BC's up-tempo offense had the number two defense in the country on their heels. And on the weekend before Halloween, the Eagles treated their fans by going back to their tricks. This could be a pass as well. They said they were going into the bag of tricks, and they do it successfully again. Smith to Travis Levy inside the 20-yard line. This was a pivotal game for Steve Adazio's team. BC and Miami each started the night with identical five and two records, each had one conference loss. Their opening two drives both wound up in the end zone as the Eagles were well focused on the task in front of them. Brown wanted a pass, but has all kinds of running room and a go-ahead touchdown for Boston College. The Eagles would not trail in the game again. Their defense showed the national television audience that they play as advertised, allowing just one more hurricane score the rest of the night. He turns the corner and scores a Miami touchdown. The disappointment was short-lived. BC sparkled. The electricity in the stands spilled onto the field as it was a night that the program was illuminated as one. Students, alumni, fans, coaches and players motivated for football reasons inspired by a former BC lacrosse player. The game also marked the welcome return of A.J. Dillon. After missing two and a half games with an ankle injury, the ACC's preseason player of the year caught a couple of passes and rushed for 149 yards. Special teams did their part. Colton Lichtenberg kicked two field goals as the Eagles pulled away, while their defense shut Miami out in the second half. They bring a blitz, and Rozier goes down back in his own territory. Max Richardson led the way for Boston College, the first sack of the night. See, rushes five, they get to Rozier, ball up in the air, and still in the air, oh and goodness. snatched out of midair by Ham Cheevers, and now he's inside the 25, and tackled from behind. That ball was in the air forever, it looked like Max Richardson did the most for the Eagles to send it skyward. Five interceptions already this season for Ham Cheevers, Jr. from Trenton, Florida. Cheevers leads the conference with those five interceptions as BC's relentless pass rush has led to an opportunistic defense that is tied for the most picks in the country over the last two seasons. Reasons to smile for BC fans everywhere. Trying that slant again, and it was one time too many. Taj Amir Torres with another Boston College interception, their second in this quarter. And great field position again set up by the defense. And great field position again set up by the defense. A.J. Dillon, touchdown, Boston College. Quickness to bounce it outside and speed to outrun McLeod. Welcome back, says Steve Adazio and Scott Leffler. This is defense in front of Boston College, which is demonstrated again tonight. It's one of the best in the country. And right on cue, there's Zach Allen to drop him back at the 41-yard line. There's Brown. Nice call, beautifully executed. He's across midfield. And wasn't content to go out of bounds. He got about five or six more by staying in. Fourth and seven, they go for it. And a diving catch made by Kobe White. That is huge. 
keeps the chains moving and the clock running for Boston College. Boston College will take over on downs. In reality, Boston College took over much earlier than that. It was a day that started with quiet respect and reflection on all things football and those much bigger than that. And it was an evening that moved the thermostat to pure, raw joy and back to where it started. The win would help the Eagles to be ranked in the college football playoff poll for the first time. The magic of the red bandana living on. <laughs> There's no stopping you. <laughs> we wanna, on, behalf of, on behalf of our, our university and this football program, I want you guys to know how inspired we are in this game to play in the honor of your we son. You what you stood for as a BC man. That's it. And what he did for everybody in this country. We're proud that we can be in this game. And we're proud to give you this game ball. And we love you. talked about in this loaded senior class that will likely be drafted and drafted pretty high next year. The thing I love most about football is how you earn what you get. You know, there's no, you know, you can't buy your way into something. You can't, you know, mommy and daddy can't call. It's, you know, you go out on the field and you perform and people see that and, you know, you're either a winner or a loser. They're down to nine. Avoiding the first line of pressure but then sacked. I grew up in New Cane, Connecticut with my mom, my dad, and my younger sister. I started playing football in fourth grade, fell in love with the game, and played all the way through you know elementary school and middle school. And then I got to high school and because there was a weight limit, I was always playing offensive and defensive line. And my freshman year I kept playing offensive line. So then I told my coach um, no, I don't want to play anymore because my real true passion was baseball at the time. Luckily, uh, he called my dad and uh, he convinced me to, to stick with it and it worked out pretty well and, uh, you know, I'm here today. So this is St. Mary's, so like every day, or every game day, we'll uh, come from the team hotel, take the buses in, park them out here, go to mass uh, with Father Jack for about a quick, you know, 30 minutes and then we line up here and then the band starts playing and they tell us to go and we've, we're following the band and the cheerleaders and we got all the fans lined up from here all the way down the million dollar staircases. Um, so it's pretty cool to see how long it stretches out um, all the fans and stuff. So it's definitely one of the best traditions in football and especially now that we got the BC Blazers and, uh, and Coats, it's, uh, you know, it really makes you feel like you know it's a business trip and you know you wouldn't want it any other way. It's a special deal. Zach Allen has been everywhere in this first half. Uh, my sophomore year, uh, I got to start playing outside linebacker and, you know, playing with the varsity team. And, you know, I just, I realized, you know, going to practice every day was, you know, the best part of my day. That's kind of where it first started to um, kick in. And then, you know, in the off seasons, during the lifts and the workouts, you know, everyone was complaining about how hard they were and how they didn't enjoy them. 
And you know, for me, those were you know those were also fun, the best part of my day. So that's kind of when I realized, you know, I really love football. BC wasn't able to take advantage of the two turnovers in the red zone interceptions by Finley. Whoa! Oh, and Zach Allen is rolling out the orientation program. You come in as a freshman and it's college, and you're excited to know meet people and you know go to parties and stuff. But you realize that uh, you have to figure out what you want to be great at and. Um, for me personally, I wanted to be the best football player that I could be and also um, take advantage of the uh, great degree that BC has to offer. So for me, you know, the main two things were, you know, being a great football player and um, getting that degree. So, you know, other things like, uh, you know, going out or hanging out with friends or trying new clubs, I kind of had to sacrifice and cut out. and. So I could just focus on those two main things. You talk about Zach Allen, what Steve Adazio hopes for from his BC football players. Tremendous citizen, 3.7 GPA in finance. He'll graduate in December. You really focused on that one matchup, that that one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's you versus them, and you know it's really exciting because you've spent the whole week scouting that that person, and you know trying to see their tells and you know their strengths and their weaknesses. So. Um, to finally be in it, you know, your focus and you're trying to go back into your, your brain a little bit on uh, what you can remember from the meetings and the film study and you hope that you prepared enough and then it's exciting to see, you know, who uh, prepared harder. Five man rush, Blau gets away, hit from behind and a diving interception by Zach Allen. Tajamir Torres delivered the hit to Blau and Allen Acrobatically holds in the football. Yeah, so this is Gaston Hall. So this is like the you know the most famous uh, building you could say, kind of you know trademark BC. Um, you know, on our Friday night games we do mass here, it's, so it's kind of a really special occasion. Yeah, it's just kind of like the symbol of it, and especially you know it's in the center of campus, so you're always seeing it and. Even from the farthest dorms, whether you're in the 2,000 apartments or 90, you know, no matter where you are, you always see gas, and especially when you're flying out, you know, for road games, you fly right over it, and you always see it, and then. Coach has uh, been awesome, because, I mean, he, he, he coaches you hard, but he also loves you hard. And then also, for me personally, he just taught me how to, you know, be a professional, how to handle my business. We said we'd all have to draw off of each other. I watched the defense out there. I watched Zach Allen refuse to come off the field. Wyatt Ray coming around the corner time after time again. Hey, they ran, they ran 104 plays. We played about a quarter last week. We got ourselves on the road. It's hard to go get an ACC win. Both my parents are very hardworking. My dad, he works, you know before we wake up and comes back late at night. And my mom, you know, she gave everything for her kids. Both my grandmas uh, were very involved. I had a lot of family that lived nearby. My dad's side all lives in Connecticut, and my mom's side uh, lives, you know, 30 minutes down the road in New York. So um, we had a big family, so there's always a lot of support at games, which was awesome. In the Allen family, you're expected to work hard and give your best, and, you know, I'm not the only successful person in my family, you know, my sister, um, she inspires me a lot. She's a, a, a great dancer and she's going to be a, a freshman at Duke in the fall and then all of my cousins are off to do great things. Zach Allen again. He plays a little bit of everywhere. He's inside. He's outside. This time he lines up inside. He's right in here and he's just going to slant to the inside, get rid of the block. And once he gets you wrapped up at 285 pounds, you're not going to move him forward. To get to the next level with team success comes individual success. So I guess just winning and uh, being able to do my job and help the team win will just get me there. Um, you know, it's pretty simple. There's a reason why teams like Alabama, who you know win national championships, they have the most players drafted. So um, it's it's a pretty simple formula, and you don't want to get too cute with it. I'm going to miss the people the most. You know, my teammates, coaches, and not just in the football program, but all over campus. Um, everyone's really supportive of the football team and um, it really is a special place to be and that's you know probably the main reason why I came back for my senior season.